Jason will stay with you. Move on down to REZ 2018-05, Michael J. Kling. Yes, sir. Um, what well, Mr. Kling is asking us is he's purchased a piece of property um, within the year, uh, has taken an existing use that really, um, and I think his attorney, he may speak on this, was um, almost abandoned. Uh, and he's gone in and spent a pretty good uh, amount of money uh, to try to rehab and revitalize the property so he can build it for a future use. Nothing particular in mind right now is speculative, but certainly the zoning is a hurdle to getting there. And the reason why that is, as you can see from the zoning map, you have about an acre and a half of M1 uh, and around you know, 25, 26 acres of RA zone. Uh, it appears from the history that when the commission so chose to make that line what it is, they were trying to give some manufacturing zoning without giving um, the total property a balance. And what Mr. Clean is asking for is he's asking for around 27 acres of manufacturing zoning in one zoning, which is the light manufacturing. We have three manufacturings. We have paper mill in three type zoning and in two, which is nuisances but um, not as heavy as the paper mill would be and then m1 which is light manufacturing distribution larger buildings some uses but you still could get into 24-hour operations so staff looked at this request and ultimately um, did some homework with mr clean's help and one of the things we we're able to learn is you have a new map a zoning map within your packet because when Mr. Colleen had the property to the south rezoned back in 2005, it was a plan development request. Plan development is what initially showed up, but he didn't rezone the entire thing to be for residential development. He left about 25 acres uh, and left it as M1 to the south. So instead of that being PD, it's my belief that should be an M1 and staff will have to process a map correction because that's how it was zoned back in 2005. So with that change, even though the plans don't support any M1 in this area, staff clearly recognizes that there's some M1 and M2. Um, I think those zonings are only going to grow because as we increase the industrial park across the street with SDs, <coughs> Home Depot, they've certainly grown in this area. I think we will have more manufacturing because of the location and proximity to the interstate. Um, but with that, the zoning of this property clearly does not reflect that. Mr. Colleen would like to have the entire balance rezoned to M1. Uh, staff was, uh, planning staff and zoning staff were concerned with going all the way back to Weisenbaker. So ultimately what you were left with is um, most staff at approval. You had one condition from engineering, which reflected an improvement of uh, Weisenbaker Road, should they access Weisenbaker Road for any kind of commercial traffic, and we're working on that language with the engineer to make sure it reflects that. Uh, the other condition being that only 10 acres would be rezoned to M1, which basically is consistent with that property line to the north. If you draw that property line south, that's about 10 acres of M1. It would cover the existing building and footprint that you have. Um, even with the 25 acres of M1 to the south, staff even talked about maybe drawing that line up and over to give them a little more M1 zoning. Staff would be okay with that. Uh, but ultimately, they still would like to do the entire balance the property in one part of this cleanup of the property has put an earthen berm uh, on the northern part along Weisenbaker where those existing neighbors were uh, but even with that earthen berm which was his own voluntary effort it wasn't something the staff was requiring he was he was trying to do um, some separation there from anything that could go from those neighbors staff just like the previous case was um, just concerned the fact that you're putting in one in an area where you had some residents along Weisenbaker and trying to make it to where those two uses could mix uh, without creating a situation that would cause their uh, potential property values to go down or just be incompatible with the area. So staff tried to compromise even though it was inconsistent with that future development map. We felt like there was enough in one to justify some in one. We just were differing on how much to put down. So staff's proposal was for either 10 acres of M1 or potentially 16 if you make it further with that rear um, and leaving the balance at RA. So that brings you up to speed now. The movement in that case was really just the discussion and that map correction. We felt like that was important um, because where we thought it was residential PD to the south, there's actually 25 acres of M1 that we believe uh, should be there based on our record from 2005. 
you just want to square the front section up, Jason? Is that what you're trying to do? I'm going to ask. Yes, sir. I mean, so we are, um, our, our proposal was to drop this line down. Straight down. Straight down. Okay. And that would yeah. leave him about 10 acres of M1. Um, I then spoke to Mr. Colleen after we presented that to him and I learned, you know, about the berm and some of his future plans and even talked about bringing this line up and over so that way you would make it consistent with the 25 acres to the south um, which would, to me, put it maybe closer to about 16 acres of M1 and about 10 of RA. Again, with the motivation of, look, the plans don't support it, but M1 is clearly in the area. Um, can we do something to balance the concerns of the potential residences across the street. And so I think his his attorney, he is here and his attorney is here to try to address some of those points, but that was where staff was coming from, but I have the luxury of the public here. Mr. Chairman, please. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, just two clarifications mm -hmm. or two questions. Um, what is the terms of the property being used? It is, it is unused, yes ma'am. There are a few, um, well there's really one large building that has an open air shelter and then some closed in space. Um, there's some concrete pad that you can see from the aerial, but then the property is it's unused. Um, they can potentially fill you in on some of those details, but it is um, it is unused and I, I wish I had an aerial for you so it could show the cleanup that Mr. Clean has done. Um, but ultimately, right now, there's not a tenant, uh, there's not a, uh, an active use of it. It was, and I, I believe the previous use was for a fertilizer operation, potting soil fertilizer operation. <coughs> the property to the north where you see a lot of activity, that's a, like a sawmill type operation. And so I believe they were potentially good neighbors and used in conjunction. Um, but after that use quit, um, I think Mr. Clean and good planning just thought, let's, let's address this before I have a tenant come in and the zoning is over. And my second question is just a clarification. Um, if you go to the property to the north and you cross over, there is like some on the zoning map. Yes, ma'am. Why, what, where, why isn't Baker would end? Mm -hmm. uh, it's currently shown as M1, but right below that, there is market um, notation that says rezoning. 2011 drawn? Yes, ma'am. Was that M1 that was withdrawn, or what is the actual zoning of that property currently? It is M1. At one point, we had a rezoning case on that, and Ms. Braswell, I don't remember if um, they did a variance. <coughs> um, I can see the gentleman's face. I cannot remember his name right now, but they had a manufacturing operation there that um, they talked to us about a potential zoning change. Uh, involving his family and the future use of that property. But that's all right. I, my, I guess it I is, wanted to make sure that yes. it's M1. It is. It's M1. Okay. It is M1 to the north. There is a um, concrete metal forms business that used to operate there okay. that was um, an industrial business they needed that M1 to do. And they did that. That note reflects a conversation we had where they almost went through a rezoning case at that time that was not finalized. But we believe that, yes, I believe that M1 is there. Yes, I have a question. You threw me a little curveball. Uh, I mean, we talked about uh, bringing that line straight down and have it all from one facing Lake Park, Bilbo uh, Road. Yes, sir. But now tonight you're saying that you're okay going down the peninsula part of it and coming back up and squaring it back up? I was. I, I tried to, when I spoke to Mr. Clean and realized that his reluctance was really, Jason, I think that whatever use goes in there is going to want some storage space in the back. Um, and now that we've identified that that M1 to the south that I believe is present through a map correction, then I thought, try to keep those M1s consistent. So I would be okay with either line. My preference is the 10, but I would, I would be okay with giving them six more acres to give them a little more space and making that M1 line to the south kind of go straight up. And with option B, you think it's 10 acres left in an RA? I do. I think I would think there's about 10 acres of RA left. Most importantly, the acreage that was fronting Wise of Baker. My my main concern. I do have concerns. There's a very nice residence to the east um, that the Edwards owned, that the Carters now own, but it's much further away and protected by some trees. The residences to the north are the ones that are much closer to this use than the ones to the east. I don't know if you can show that on the aerial. Yeah. 
it doesn't. But you can see on the eastern side of that property, there's kind of a line of uh, pine trees. That line goes for some distance, and then there's some additional buffering, and then a residence. But it's just one residence on a very large piece of property. I'm concerned about that particular use, but I was more concerned with the ones that are literally right across the street on Watson Baker. Mr. Chairman, Jason, does your new uh, property line run do, do these recommendations reflect the, the new changes that you would be okay with? It only reflects the 10 acres. Okay. That conversation with Mr. Colleen um, okay. last week was something I just thought, okay. you know, I needed to bring that to y'all's attention in case that's brought up. But candidly, um, I think Mr. Colleen is interested in the entire property, not 10 or 16 acres. Of course. Okay. Any questions for staff on this? Mm -hmm. There being none, anyone here this evening who wishes to speak in favor of this request come forward this time? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Members of the Commission, I'm Dale Wayndale, thousand twenty-five nineteen of Gary Jones, Murphy, and Russell. I know you don't know that by now. <laughs> Let me give you the rest of the story. Jason did a great job. Uh, that's one good thing, I guess, about getting older that you deal with a lot of property. Mm -hmm. uh, you put the zoning map on, I'll share you all with some. Yes. That triangle, uh, the county commissioner zoned it that way because the triangle was what was owned years ago. The, and this is before height, considered before height. And I did an exchange, and I took the triangle along the road and swapped it for the orange triangle to make a rectangle because we found it. So the, the north uh, the corner of Weisenbaker and uh, the Lake Park Belleville Road, that rectangle was one time a triangle. And that's why you see the zone. Hmm. You follow what happened. And uh, it's not that you can't commission when it is gave somebody a triangle and somebody else a triangle, but that's how it all worked out. It worked out for the property owners. And uh, to the south in 2005, when uh, that was Mike's property, and then shortly after he bought it, we were zoned there. It was M1 at that time. And we rezoned only the portion to the south, which left the M1 on the top. So what do we have? We've got this track of land that is bordering M1 across the road. It's bordering M1 on the south. And it's bordering, to a large extent, M1 on the north. So logically, it ought to be M1. It um, suggests that anyway. And if you look, and when you talk about the buses, and if you were driving to it, I'm sure a lot of you probably assume this, and you can just pass it around. This is Weisenbaker Lane, you should line down Weisenbaker Lane, beginning at the Lake Park Belleville Road and going back to the, to the east. This is what you would see. So what I'm suggesting I hope that I tie it all together to <coughs> you know, This property, if you don't zone it all M1, I don't know what you're going to do with it. I don't know. Uh, first off, you can't get to the back because of the barn. And secondly, it doesn't have any use other than that. <coughs> we had, uh, this was all just now, uh, I'm, I'm speaking. Why you have out to look at that. This is what's on that corner. Which you've got to bring back. It's not the uh, uh, some of you would feel it's nice or some of us who are familiar with lumber business might think it looks okay. But uh, it's not really what you want to see. And it's there. And the mounds of the, if you look in the background, all those mounds that you see aren't dirt. It's pieces of wood and <coughs> Certainly something you wouldn't, uh, that houses a lot of creatures that you probably do. 
as you know, what about that in the flat we're talking about? This, that flat, this flat is owned by Old Castle, formerly known as Greenwood. They are a big, long, and dark, dark, uh, dark corporation. They are out of town. They have a lot of uh, locations. They do a lot of things. So they have a food casting, they uh, own them. Jason, they after this place was a mandate. I mean, it was, uh, we negotiated. This contract fell through a number of times because Mike didn't want to take on the risk of cleaning up. And if they didn't want the risk, they didn't agree the terms of the contract that they were responsible for any environmental problems. And uh, I mean, it was a big risk. And finally, we got to a point where we all reached an agreement. And Mike spent months cleaning up and spent thousands and thousands now, I wish I had a before and after because you wouldn't believe it. I mean, you ought to get some accommodation for how well it looks. This is a building, but you see how nice this site looks. It's totally clean all the way across. He's going to put new sheeting on that building and will refurbish the building. And after he moved all the trash and debris, he discovered that somebody had poured these nice concrete pads on it, which was coming to the use that we were discussing today. This is a view looking to the back all the way to the far eastern side. This is another view. You can see the piles of sawdust and debris a little bit on the side of that photo. Anyone else here this evening wishing to speak in favor of this request come forward this time? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request come forward? There being none, is anyone here this evening wishing to speak against this request come forward? 
anyone wishing to speak against this request. There being none, commissioners, any discussion amongst ourselves before I ask for a motion on this? I just have one question for Jason, please. The, uh, the new map we received today. The, yes, sir. Uh, so that is, in fact, M1 down there, yeah. that new section? I, I, I believe so. Pretty sir. much a foregone conclusion. What we have to do is, um, if we can find sufficient evidence that it was done, that that was just an error on staff's part or in GIS somehow, because they do happen, then we do what we call a map correction, which is an administrative approval based on documentation that will change that particular section from PD to M1. We have a survey from the original case, the PD site plan from the original case, both reference a 25 acre M1 remnant. So I, I believe it's there. We just have not had the time to process it. But when we learned about it last week, we felt like it was worth lifting up because that does make a difference in the case of oh, a neighbor that's M1 versus residential CD. May, may I just also follow up on that? So the, just because of the way the illustration is showing up on the screen where the gray is not clear, I just wanted clarification. Are you saying that from the east to the west boundary of those lines shown within the PD section to that south, southern line, that, that entire thing is M1? There's a sliver of yellow still shown along, <coughs> along uh, Lake Park. That, there is there was some question about whether or not they rezone the front portion because they may on the survey have already tried to accommodate for the four lane widening of lake park belleville so that was the only edge where i felt like there was some uh discrepancy but beyond that widening edge yes ma'am i mean that 25 acres is property line to that section all the way back to the rear yeah i, I want to clarify something i think mr bill mentioned it a while ago the um RA that's showing up in the above triangle up there where, where the M1's already there. Mm -hmm. Is that M1 or is that? It is. That is. So the, that's what we're talking about flipping. That's right. The, so the top portion is a mixture of M1 and RA. I didn't realize the adjacent neighbor that was done because of a one person owned that triangle and the other person owned kind of the triangle behind <coughs> it. They did that to kind of even the property though. Which I understand that makes sense. I just didn't, I did not have that history. So that's not an issue. In other words, at it's some not point, be a landlock uh, issue or something. No, we would not let them subdivide it for landlock. But at some point, they would they will probably want to change the zoning on that property to make it consistent. Um, we allow for a 50 foot um, leeway on zoning lines because most of the well, they, they can be very general, not survey break. So we allow them to encroach up to 50 feet, but that is longer. That is wider than. 50 feet. So at some point they will probably be back to this is the other part of this gap though. That's right. The with okay. 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 I'm fine now. Thank you. Commissioners, any more discussion? There being none, I will take a motion on this case. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to go ahead and recommend to the county commission that we go ahead and recommend M1 zoning for the entire Section 27.58? Yes, sir. Second. Who seconded it? So I have a motion to second any further discussion on the motion. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Back to it. I know we didn't have much discussion about the zoning, um, but I do think that that condition about paving a wise and vicar is still appropriate. Okay, so okay. if they would consider modifying that. Let me uh, Yes, we'll go ahead and, and include. Uh, Number one for the any entrances off of Wise and Maker require Wise and Maker Road be paid. Yeah, the full 27 acres and the single condition. Yeah, that's the motion. Mr. Willis, are you still second that? Mm -hmm. So that's that because uh, it would take only if the entrance is off of one to Wise and Maker. Right, that's correct. Any further discussion on the motion? We have a motion to second. All in favor, please say come to raise your right hand. Thank you very much, Mr. Carmel. That is unanimous. 8-0.